Hey ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another edition of your Raw Reaction Show. I'm your host, Glenn Thomas. As always, one-fourth of the Wrestling Marks of Excellence, which you can hear each and every Thursday night on Fox Sports Radio, 1340 AM, 96.9 FM. Also, you can find us on iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, as well as YouTube. Make sure you hit that bell notification. Also, hit that subscribe button. Also, go to iTunes and leave us a five-star review. Check out our weekly show. As I said, each new show drops on Thursday. Uh, but let's get pop into this Raw after the Elimination Chamber. We saw the Raw after the Elimination Nation Chamber start off with the CEO Triple H come out and talk about how wrestling is great right now and how WWE is putting on great shows. Basically, talked about the Elimination Chamber, Becky and Sasha winning the tag team titles. Talk about Becky Lynch, even though she's suspended for 60 days, he loved the fact that she came out and didn't sit still and attack Charlotte Flair. But she told Becky if she do it again, she will be arrested and prosecuted. Then he talked about how it is an honor and a privilege for him as well as DX to be inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame. I'll get on that a little bit later because they were the first, it was breaking news on this past Monday that they will be inducted. They're the headliners for this year's this year's Hall of Fame celebration, which is the night before WrestleMania. He also talked about how WWE needs a new look and how some freshness needs to come into him on Monday Night Raw. And he said that he's bringing up some of the NXT stars. So we got Alistair Black, we got Ricochet, we got Johnny Gargano, and we have Tomasa Ciampa, who will be making their Raw debut on this past Monday Night Raw. But Raw kicked off with the first match of the night, which was Baron Corbin taking on Braun Strowman in a tables match. Now... I don't know about you, but I'm tired of seeing Braun Strowman and Barry Corbin go at it. Now, Barry Corbin has been improving a lot lately uh, because of what the matches have been, so strictly strictly street fights. Um, but he controlled the majority of this match here against Baron, against Braun Strowman until Braun Strowman hits him with some steel steps in the middle of the match. This went on about two or three segments. Uh, but at the end of the day, you got it. Braun Strowman gets the win over Baron Corbin as he put him through the table. No help this time from Drew McIntyre or Bobby Lashley for Baron and Corbin, Braun Strowman gets the win. Little as Braun Strowman walking up the stage, a little interaction between Braun Strowman and Paul Heyman as he grabs Paul Heyman by the throat. Then he releases Paul Heyman. Heyman com comes out after the commercial break and cuts a promo about Brock Lesnar. WWE shows a little video about Brock Lesnar growing up on the farm to present day Brock Lesnar. Pretty good video. Go ahead and check that out. Maybe on YouTube or uh, check it out on WWE Network. They may have it up on WWE.com. They may have it there, but it was a pretty good video uh, package that they did for Braun for. Brock Lesnar, but we move on. Next match of the night, we saw the next, call, the first call up, the first NXT star uh, that been called up. We saw Ricochet come to help Finn Balor as he was getting beat up by the former Intercontinental Champion Bobby Lashley. If you do not know, Finn Balor beat Bobby Lashley on Sunday night at the Elimination Chamber. Will actually pin Leo Rush to become the new Intercontinental Champion. These two guys here will take on Leo Rush and Bobby Lashley in a high-flying match. Ricochet did what Ricochet does. High-flying, good segments and good parts of chain wrestling between him and Leo Rush in the match. We saw Finn Balor with the coup de gras, but it was Leo, it was the Ricochet himself getting the pin on Leo Rush. Once again, Leo Rush picks up the loss. Bobby Lashley was a little bit frustrated at the end of the night, but you saw Ricochet get the win here. First NXT star to be called up, and he gets the win. Hopefully, hopefully, my opinion, hopefully they let Finn Balor and Ricochet fight each other at WrestleMania for the Intercontinental Championship. I know they were just tag team partners, but I hope that storyline goes that way where Ricochet may get his WrestleMania moment this year being called up. I don't see anybody else right now that's in the IC picture. Dean Ambrose is doing his own thing. Bobby Lashley could, but is that really a WrestleMania match? Bobby Lashley and Finn Balor. Wouldn't you love to see Ricochet and Finn Balor? Hope the WWE goes that way. I'm just trying to be a booker. Hey, let me know your thoughts. Would you like to see Ricochet and Finn Balor at WrestleMania? Let's move on to the next match. We saw the Lucha House Party take on Kurt Hawkins and Zack Ryder. Zack Ryder still on his quest to get hurt. Kurt Hawkins, his former tag team partner, the youngest tag team champions ever. A win. And it did not happen on this past Monday Night Raw. The Lucha House Party picks up the win here over Kurt Hawkins and Zack Ryder. Now, I just being a booker, once again, I see Kurt Hawkins and Zack Ryder getting a win somewhere. Maybe WrestleMania, that Kurt Hawkins may actually get a win on the pre-show somewhere to end his streak. Uh, what a moment it would be for him. Kurt Hawkins, who never had a WrestleMania moment. Zack Ryder, who has several WrestleMania moments. Remember, Zack Ryder won the IC title a couple years ago at WrestleMania and then dropped it the night after. 
after back to the Miz. But nonetheless, uh, Kurt Hawkins might want to get that WrestleMania moment. Eh, we move on. Uh, then we saw the next NXT call-ups. The North, current North American champion and an NXT champion, Johnny Gargano and Tomasa Ciampa, taking on the revival. If you remember years ago to uh, NXT Toronto, I believe, where you saw Gargano and Ciampa take on the revival, which they end up winning the tag team, the NXT tag team championship over the revival. And this match did not fail here. All the call-ups had great matches tonight. This one right here really set the cake uh, or raised the bar, as you would, in the tag team division as the uh, as Gargano and Ciampa pick up the win over the Revival in a non-tag team title match. It was good to see these two guys. Good to see tag team wrestling uh, at its best on Monday Night Raw. Made you think about where is AOP at? Uh, where is the B team? Uh, where are some of these other tag teams that we've seen on Monday Night Raw, especially AOP, who were former tag team champions. Love to see them back in the mix here since the revival, since Johnny Gargano and Ciampa are here on Monday Night Raw. Love to see that thing renewed as we saw in NXT a little over a year ago with those three tag teams facing each other back and forth. It will be great for the WWE Tag Team Division on Monday Night Raw. Uh, then we moved on to a... I don't know, pointless match or some kind of pointless match, has some kind of point to it uh, with Dean Ambrose. Well, first we saw Drew McIntyre backstage talking to Triple H and told Triple H that he wanted to have Seth Rollins tonight in the ring because he saw himself to be in the main event. And then we saw Dean Ambrose standing beside Drew McIntyre and he slaps Drew McIntyre in the face. And you know, you have it right there. The match was made, Dean Ambrose versus Drew McIntyre. But it was a very quick match. It didn't last too long because two after two Claymores, Drew McIntyre gets the win over Dean Ambrose. Dean Ambrose is a little quirky here. I know he's on a losing streak. As allegedly, uh, he's supposed to be leaving the WWE at the end of WrestleMania. I think it's, me personally, I think it's a work. I don't think Dean Ambrose is going anywhere. Uh, I think Dean Ambrose is just using this right now uh, because they really don't have a place for him. If he does leave, it might hatch off to the man. But nonetheless... WWE, uh, Dean Ambrose right now is not in a good place with the company or it's a storyline with Dean Ambrose. He's jobbing out to some of these guys. We saw him job out to EC3 and now we see him job out to Drew McIntyre. Then you saw him later back on later on in the night where Seth Rollins was cutting an interview and he was like, where were you at, man? You ain't come to help me. Like these two guys are trying to get back together again. Like Dean is losing his mind. Don't know where WWE is going with the storyline, but only time will tell. Let me know what you thought on Dean Ambrose. Do you think it's a work? Or do you think Dean Ambrose is actually leaving at the end of his contract? Then we move on to Alistair Black, who made his debut against Elias. Once again, Elias got interrupted. This time he got interrupted by Alistair Black, the former NXT champion. He comes out, and they, these two guys had a pretty good match here. If you remember on NXT a while back, if you're a big NXT fan, these two guys wrestled back in NXT as well. Um, Elias uh, you know, and, and Alistair Black match up very well in this match. But nonetheless, it was... Alistair Black picking up the win over Elias. Now, Elias, you don't know where he's going. He's back and forth. He might be thrown in the IC picture, but I know this guy is over, but he's over without winning matches in the ring. He needs to get on a winning streak, start winning winning consecutive matches in the ring. If you want fans to be look at him much more than just being a musician who can cut a good promo. Yes, he is a heat seeker. I'm glad that he is a heel again, but he needs to start winning matches and maybe and just maybe be in some high profile matches instead of being in the ring setting on his guitar. But nonetheless, Alistair Black picks up the win. Good pickup by WWE to bring Alistair Black up. Love to see some good matches there. Also in the IC title picture. And I say IC title picture because that's where WWE needs the um the excitement right now. The tag team division needs to pick up. The IC title needs to be relevant again. The universal picture, whether you like him or not, Brock Lesnar, it is still relevant because Seth Rollins, in my opinion, will win at WrestleMania. And now you have a lot of players that you can be involved that Seth Rollins can dance with after WrestleMania with Aleister Black, with a um, Ricochet, with a Johnny Gargano, with a Elias, with a Tomasa Ciampa. So right now, WWE is positioning themselves for after WrestleMania. But then we move on. Then we saw the main event of the evening. Ronda Rousey taking on Ruby Riot. And we know we saw this match at the Elimination Chamber. 
I gave this match give a little bit more time here. Ruby Riot, I think, in in the few, near future, will be a major player uh, in the women's division, and she's already is. Um, but she will not. You know, she didn't get the win tonight over Ronda Rousey because Ronda Rousey made her tap. But eventually, Ruby Riot will become the uh, women's champion, in my opinion. Whenever Ronda Rousey decides, or whenever WWE decides to drop the title, take the title off of Ronda Rousey, I think Ruby Riot and the Riot Squad has put in a lot of work, and they don't get a lot of credit for what they've done on Monday Night Raw. They they're every each and every week they're in compelling storylines each and every week their actions and the, the group as a whole uh, have gotten a little bit better but nonetheless Ronda Rousey picks up the win here on Monday Night Raw over Ruby Riot. we also had a Boston Hug Connection segment where Becky and Sasha Banks uh, came out and celebrate their win as in becoming the new and I says new WWE Women's Tag Team Champions because they're not the first ever women tag team champion. Go back in the 80s, uh, you had a uh, host of women who ta held the tag Women's Tag Team Championship. You had the Jumping Bomb Angels. I believe you had the tag team, and it escapes my mind right now, the last tag team champions uh, that you had that Jimmy Hart was the manager of, and I'll think of it in a little bit, uh, that Jimmy Hart was the manager of. But WWE is their show, is their party. They can say what they want to do to their fans who may not search the internet. And so Becky and Sasha Banks are the new women tag team champions. And but we found out who their first contenders would be. Tamina and Nia Jax who came out who interrupted the Boston Hug Connection promo, which was pretty bleak and kind of bad if you want to think about it. It was kind of a dull moment in the show, but nonetheless but Tamina and Nia Jax, no match was set, but these two got involved. Nia Jax did say something that was true, that every time Sasha Banks wins a championship, she does not hold it hold it long, and every time she has a first title defense, she does lose it. So, will us see if Ta Sasha Banks and Bayley will hold on to these titles uh, for a long time. We know that they probably have a match at Fastlane, maybe WrestleMania, for, no WrestleMania for sure, and we'll see if these two women can hold on to the Women Tag Team Championship. And, and I go, too. The thing, as everybody wants to hear about, the induction of the DX, the Generation X, will be inducted into the, the 2019 Hall of Fame the night before WrestleMania. Now, in my opinion, may agree, disagree, let me know what you think. Leave a comment in the comment section. I think WWE, is this is a cheap way to get China into the Hall of Fame. I, I, she deserved to be in the Hall of Fame. I'm not knocking the induction at all. But I believe the knife wonder of the world, China, should be inducted by herself as an individual, not within the group of the... of DX and understand why they did this. They didn't want the limelight on China. If you remember a couple of years ago, Triple H said there were some things that China had to clean up uh, in order for the inductor into the Hall of Fame. And yes, yeah, she's dead, so she can't accept it. Uh, that those things still ain't cleaned up. But she's being inducted as the Generation X, which makes Shawn Michaels a two time Hall of Famer. Eventually, Triple H will be a two time Hall of Famer. Understand you. Road Dog. In my opinion, would have may maybe maybe not been a Hall of Famer uh, on his own. Same thing with Billy Gunn. X Pac, you can make an argument for he could or could not be a Hall of Famer. Do you think any of these guys besides Triple H, Hunter, uh, would have been Hall of Famers if it would not been for D Generation X? Please let me know. But I think w this is a cheat way WWE gets China into a Hall of Fame. Congratulations on China for being in the Hall of Fame, but nonetheless, she should have been going in by her. Self, let me know what you think. Uh, leave a comment below uh, on this induction of the Hall of Fame. Who else would you like to see be inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame this year? As always, ladies and gentlemen, thank you. Join me tomorrow night as we give you the SmackDown review as well. As always, if you're not confirmed, consider yourself denied. End of story, ladies and gentlemen. Talk to you later.